Today I'm going to show you how to set up this rain weather module. I'm going to go through and explain the actual module itself. We're going to wire it, code it, and set it all up for an Arduino. So first thing we're going to do is go through and have a look at the item itself. I purchased this uh, it actually only for a few dollars, so it's actually quite cheap. So this comes in three pieces. We have the metal strip component, which actually detects the rain. We have the cabling, and then we have the actual board itself. Now the board itself is a quite commonly used LM393, which is a voltage comparator. You have seen me use this board before in the past, which is in the light resistor uh, video that I did previously, so you can watch that video as well. But if we go through the specs of the comparator, uh, basically we have the voltage in, which is 3.3 to 5 volts. We have a ground, digital output, an analog output. We've got some LEDs on there to show whether the uh, digital output's actually on and off. And then we have the power LED as well. We have the adjustable potentiometer, which we need for the digital output. And then we have the connector points up the other end of the board, which go off for the wiring to the actual uh, metal strip that detects the rain. So let's check out the wiring and see how we wire this all up. Okay, so pretty straightforward. We have first off the power cable. If we go from the top of the comparator board we got the power so that goes across I'm connecting that up to 5 volts now then the next one we have is the ground which you connect to the ground on the Arduino we have the digital output which I'm connecting up to pin 52 but you can connect it to any of the pins that are digital on your Arduino board depending on if you're using an Uno, Mega, Micro, whatever it might be um, and then the analog output we're going across to the analog uh, zero. So you can kind of see on my mega board here, my analog is the blue one, uh, that blue cable, and then I've got that green cable which I'm going over to pin 52. You can choose whatever pins you want for your setup, just make sure that you set up your code appropriate to whatever pins you've actually connected it to. Alright, so now we're going to take a look at the code itself. Now, you can check the link in the description below. I've got a link across to the code where you can copy that and paste it into the Arduino uh, programmer itself. Now, you just have to make sure, like I said, up the top where I've got the rain digital, I've got 52. Now that's whatever digital pin you're connecting it to. So you'll need to change that if you've got it into a different pin. Same for the analog pin as well. A0 because it's the analog pin zero. Now if you've plugged it into a different one, you would just change that accordingly. Now basically we've just got it set up so that the pins are set as inputs. Uh, the serial uh, begins so we can actually check out the serial monitor uh, in the code. Now in the loop itself basically uh, we've got two components here. We've got a digital component and an analog component. Make sure that if you're looking at these you're actually looking at them separately because the two pieces aren't connected. It's, and this will be important when I show you uh, with that potentiometer and how the uh, digital input comes in. So basically with the if digital read uh, digital pin, what's, what it's looking for is if it's a low output, uh, it's saying that it's uh, wet or the board's wet. Uh, else it's saying that the... Uh, board is dry. So that's all it's saying is that it's yes or no. Now how it checks I'll show you in adjusting the sensitivity later on in the video. Um, but basically it's giving a high and low for that digital pin which is just giving you a wet or dry. Now um, you can change that to say whatever you want but at the end of the day it's a on or off. There's no variable uh, there's no, yes, it's a little bit wet, it's a little bit dry, it's either one or zero. So you just need to take that into account if you're using it as the digital uh, input. Now, if we move down further to the analog value, we basically have the Arduino reading what the value is coming through that analog pin. 
So it's reading the analog value and it's then displaying the value. Now that is going to be in that range of values from zero all the way 1023. Now that's just the values that the analog uh, reads between. So there's no going outside of uh, those value ranges. Now whether or not it actually hits those values, uh, I would doubt it would get down to zero without it being basically a straight short across the board and plus with the resistance that is inside it. I, I doubt it would get down to zero anyway, but uh, you would have that range. So when you know roughly how uh, that value equates to how wet it might be, you can code that into your program. So for example, you could say that between 800 to 1023, that is dry. And then as it's between 800 to 700, it's a little less dry. From 700 to 500, it's um, a little wet. And then from 500 down, it could be just, it's drenched. Whatever you want to say, you can adjust those uh, values of the serial print lines and actually say between this and this, you know, that, that's just however you want to code it up. But the values will come in and you will basically have however wet the board is or however dry the board is, you'll need to then see how much that value is that's coming in against whatever you want to say is how wet the board would be. So here I have everything wired up and connected up properly. Uh, it doesn't matter with the positive or negative on the actual uh, sensor board with the actual metal strips on it. Um, but as I spray with some liquid, you can see at the moment it doesn't actually show anything on the comparator with that light because it's saying, okay, well, I'm not um, giving a digital output. It's just saying it's it's not basically set up. So what I've got here is the screwdriver. I'm going to adjust the potentiometer. Now, when I change the values, I actually lower it to the point where I know, yep, this is where I want it to say that the board's wet. And there you go, it actually turns on. So I can go back and forth a little bit just to get it right. But basically I'm saying that's when it's wet. Now, if I dry the board off with my fingers a little bit, you'll see that not only is the board dry, but the light on the comparator right there is turned off. So if I spray it again now, knowing that it knows where that point of being the digital, hey, I'm wet now, so put the output, there you go, it actually, the light turns on. And at the same time, we get that digital signal out through into the Arduino to say, yes, it's actually going digital value is now wet, not dry. At the same time, the analog value is always going to be outputting. So it's going to be outputting that analog value back to the Arduino and it's showing there on the COM port or through the um, serial monitor. So we can see there that it goes from 900 down to 500. So that's where I would have sprayed it and it's giving a lot less um, of a value there because it's actually creating that contact between those rails on the actual board. Just remembering to take into account that the digital and the analog values don't line up. They're not connected in the coding or on the board itself. They're separate values. So that digital is all dependent on how you've actually adjusted with that screwdriver on the potentiometer to say the difference between wet and dry. As you can see, it's now saying wet and also the analog values are coming down because that actual resistance um, is changed because the board's actually wet itself. So you, like I said, you just need to adjust it and uh, basically set it up or calibrating the actual comparator for the digital part. It will take a little bit of time just to get it set up and exactly uh, how you want the digital analog outputs to uh, actually be detected by the Arduino. But once that's set up, you can leave it. It's good to go. You don't need to change it. 
Last thing I want to talk about is the sensor corrosion. Now, uh, I've been doing a little bit of research on because uh, how, how these boards work is there's actual there's a current that's pushed into that railing to allow for it to pick up the the resistance. So what happens is over time, if it's actually left on all the time, it actually starts to build up corrosion in the in the weather and um, also being exposed to you know the elements and stuff. So it can start to break down the board and have that corrosion across it, which isn't good for the board. It's not going to be able to detect the rain properly uh, over time. So one of the things that you may want to think about doing um, is potentially having the board only turn on and off when you're actually wanting to make those readings uh, and detect the rain. If not, potentially having it set up for a timer to maybe turn on and off every, like, let's say, five minutes, um, turns on for, for a couple seconds and then turns off for five minutes, whatever it is. It just depends on however uh, many recordings you want to do of the actual uh, rain to see how it's um, actually like wherever you're putting it. So that's really up to you. You can, if the longer you actually have the board turned on, that's going to decrease the life of the board. Uh, not sure because I haven't had my board long enough how long that's going to last. If anyone knows of or has experienced it, I'd love to see how long your board lasted in the comments below. Other than that, Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, subscribe if you haven't already to keep up to date with similar projects like this. Now, as always, thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.